reason that we're all here. You've seen her on the late show. You've seen her all over Comedy Central. Do me a favor. Start clapping right now. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Solomon. Thank you. That was sweet of you guys. Uh, it is nice that you guys made it out tonight. I almost didn't make it out. I have three avocados at home that are about to expire, so... <sighs> they don't even know I'm out right now. It's crazy. <sighs> I bought five on sale, so it's been really stressful this last week. They're, like, never ripe when you buy them, and then you only have a three-hour window to do something with them. I never know when that's happening. I'll just call into work where I'm like, I don't know if I can make it into work today. I think my avocados might be hatching any second. <laughs> and I'd really like to be there for them. <laughs> or then you're just running home to scarf three in a row over your sink. Like, I'm gonna throw out avocados, right? It's a lot of money. It's, it's $10. That's, in this economy, that's a lot. Um, that's a Chipotle meal. Uh, I have debt. Do you guys have debt? That's my demographic. Um, I knew it. I could tell that you guys had debt. You look amazing. Uh, I don't have a lot of debt. It's just like enough where I think about it all day long. Do you guys have that debt? No. One time I did get out of debt, and then I was like, now what? <laughs> no. Like, I didn't feel anything. And then I got sad because I had nothing to live for anymore. So I just put myself back into debt again. <sighs> Feels good to have goals, you know? Like, if you pay your debt off, that's great. But if you don't and then die, like, that's pretty great, too. <laughs> That's the plan I'm on right now. It's, it's called the fuck it plan. It's where you just buy whatever you want and then you just die. <laughs> Make sure you die though. That is the most important part of this plan. Like don't live long. <laughs> just turn and burn. That's, that's my motto. I don't know. I just have, I have medical debt. That's how I got in. Um, no, I got colitis a few years ago. Um, not to brag or anything, it's one of the more expensive diarrheas. <laughs> that was some really good shit, and it was good. I, <laughs> no, I had to go to the hospital, and I, I don't have insurance, so that's one way to get into debt. Like, a lot of people just go to college for debt, but I just get diarrhea for a weekend. I'm like, I don't have time to do four years of school. So I chose the diarrhea, you know? Start on those payment plans right away, so. I'm trying to save money, though. Like, I used to bring my lunch to work a lot lately. I brought a can of chili to work once. You know, isn't that depressing? It was even sadder is when I took it out of the bag, I realized it was a can of refried beans. <laughs> I was a girl at work that just ate a whole can of refried beans as our lunch. Like people were like, what is that? I was like, oh, just some dried up dog shit that I added water to it. I couldn't even finish it. It was so much bean, I was sweating. It was like the hardest I'd worked all night. I was like, this should be a challenge on a TV show. This is so intense right now. Have you ever had refried beans? It's like eating mud with bacon in it. I had no water. Ugh, it's the worst. But it is hard though. Like everything in New York's expensive, right? If you were in another city, you'd be killing it. But because we live here, it feels like we're camping all the time. <laughs> that's true. Like, I live in a studio apartment that's like half the size of this stage. It's about 10000 a month. It's a, it's a pretty good deal. I have a smoke detector in there where I'm just kind of like, why? Do you know what I mean? Like, what's the point of having a smoke detector in a studio apartment? 
By the time it goes off, I'm just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm also in the room as well, like I can see it. <laughs> Just stayed to make sure you were safe. <laughs> no, but it is like camping. I don't know. I hate landlords in New York. Aren't they the worst? I don't think I've ever met one that I'm like, you're a really great person. <laughs> like, I, have, I had a broken window in my apartment, and I emailed my landlord to come fix it, and then he emailed me back. He was like, I'll be on that ASAP. And it's been two months since he's fixed it. So I think he thinks ASAP means, actually, sorry. Uh, it's too much. I, I can't get on that. <laughs> it's a lot of work. He also did this other thing. If he did come and fix it, he would never be like, oh, that's so horrible. I'm so hard. That's so bad that you're going through that. Like, instead, he would just accuse me of doing things that I wasn't doing. That's why the product broke. <laughs> like, I had a shower head fall out, and instead of fixing it, he was like, Seta, you cannot be hanging on your shower head like that, okay? <laughs> it just is not made for a grown woman to be swinging on a shower head, okay? No, uh, I'll get, try to get on it, but there's nothing I can do, you know? <laughs> You'd be like, you got to stop roundhouse kicking your doorknobs, <laughs> you know? They can't take that brute force. You just close it gently like this. <laughs> like, all right, thank you. I'm such a monster. <laughs> Ugh, I don't know. But yeah, it's rough. I don't know. You guys are from New York, right? A lot of you? All right, cool. So you've seen people cry outside a lot, right? <laughs> it's getting really nice, so people are going to start doing it a lot more. <laughs> it's because we don't have cars to cry in, so we just do it in the park or on the train in front of other people. I saw a woman walking and crying the other day, and I was like, that's so New York. <laughs> just to be like, I don't have time to sit down and cry. <laughs> My avocados are about to expire. <laughs> I don't know. I've only seen women cry, though, outside, that I've never seen a guy cry outside. But I have seen a guy masturbate outside before. <laughs> which I think is Jell's crying. <laughs> right? If, it's the same outcome. <laughs> it feels good, and then you're tired afterwards. <laughs> Oh, that's all I needed to do. <laughs> no, get it out. Uh, <laughs> it's great, though. I, uh, but yeah, like I was eating at this restaurant in my neighborhood, and I didn't finish my meal, so I asked the waitress to box my food up for me, and then she replied with, when did you decide to give up? <laughs> anyway, it took me a long time to figure out that she was talking about my food. <laughs> that I just replied with eight years ago. <laughs> I just wanted this in a box, like, <laughs> to know we're getting so personal here. <laughs> but I'm trying to self-improve. Like, I got that book, Lean In. Do you guys know about that book? It's supposed to be, like, self-empowering for women in the workplace. So just been doing a lot of that at work, just kind of, like, leaning in <laughs> and then swishing my tits in together like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I forgot my reports. <laughs> I think that's what the book's about. I haven't read it yet. But just crushing it in the corporate world. Yeah. But you do what you can. I try to work hard. Like, I, I walked 20,000 steps the other day. Um, I don't have a Fitbit. I just count out loud when I walk. I'm addicted to my phone. Anybody else addicted? Yeah, just a few, just a few. Thanks for coming out and bringing your phones. Um, no. Like, I took time off from my phone last Sunday, and then I had all this time that I started making my own butter and uh, just farming, so that was pretty good. <laughs> but I do, I like technology. I like, I like how it's made everything so accessible. Like, this is my favorite thing. I like how when you want to buy a song and you don't know the name of it, you can just put a few keywords into a search engine and you can find it that way, or you can just Shazam it. 
Because I remember when I was in high school, if I wanted to buy a song and I didn't know the name of it, this was like 20 years ago, I would have to drive 15 minutes out of my way and then just sing it awkwardly for the Best Buy guy. <laughs> uh, so mortifying. Um, did a little talent show for him every, every week. <laughs> I don't have a great voice. It got weird sometimes. Because uh, one time I was in, back then I was into this band, like a lot of new age stuff. So it'd be like Enigma. Do you guys remember them? <laughs> They're not even a band. It's just Buddhist monks chanting with sexual noises in the background. <laughs> Do you know how hard that is to explain <laughs> to the Best Buy guy? <laughs> He's like, no, I don't. Do you know how it goes? And I'm like, um... Yeah, um, do you guys have that song that's like, Sly. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Do you guys have that song? Like, he's like, ma'am, I think you need to leave. <laughs> He's like, did you just come? I'm like, yeah, I did. Um, but I also want to know the name of that song, so. No. That's a good song to karaoke to at your office party. If you want to spice it up or get fired. It's always good. Um, this is going great, guys. I'm really happy with this. <laughs> That's how you... That's how you know a professional is when they call out what they're doing the whole time. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm great. Um, yeah. It's hard to do shows. Like, one time I did this show, and this guy came up to me afterwards, and he was like, can I be brutally honest with you? And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I was like, that was close. <laughs> Almost got my feelings hurt. <laughs> Like, say by my back, like an adult, you know? <laughs> I hate brutally honest people. <laughs> um, speaking of brutally honest, I am married. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It was hard. Barely. Right under 40. It was really scary there for a second. I was so nervous. For a moment, I thought I was going to have to be one of those women that didn't believe in marriage. So... <laughs> I was like, oh, now I do, so that feels good. <laughs> I got married when I was 39, which I feel like is a little late to be getting married for the first time, so I've just been telling people this is my second marriage. <laughs> first one died, it was so sad. <laughs> you guys got sad for my fake first one. You're like, oh, what, what did he die of? I'm like, I don't know, he got murdered, I don't care. <laughs> I just scared that I'm married again. <laughs> I don't know. But I've been married for about two years now, and I feel like this is what I discovered about marriage. I feel like marriage is basically two people maneuvering around each other's mental illness. <laughs> right? Like, you just have to find somebody that has the right mental illness for your mental illness. Like, I have depression, clearly. And... <laughs> My husband has OCD, so it works out perfectly. Because he cares about a lot of stuff, and then I care about nothing. So It's just a balance, and you find it. Um, I got lucky. My husband is a squirter. So, you know, so rare. So rare to find a guy that does that. Um, anybody squ squirters in here? I hope all of you, because that's the joke. If not, check your prostate. Um, I like how guys coined that term, like they thought certain women ejaculated. And then all these articles came out saying that it's just pee. Isn't that hilarious? That guys thought they were doing something amazing to us, but they were just making us pee. I hope I ruined one guy's night tonight. That's why I got into this. He's good, though. I, I was with him last night, and he wanted sex, but I didn't feel like it. So I just told him I was on my period. 
And then he was like, oh, cool, blowjobs. <laughs> and I'm like, actually, it's really bad right now. Um, I'm bleeding out my mouth. It's like, <laughs> ah, it hurts so bad. <laughs> He's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to have sex with him. I just don't want to have sex with him 24-7. You know? Like, I quit my day job a few months ago, and I feel like I get sexually harassed more at home than I did at work. <laughs> but I think I might go back to work again so I can get paid for the sexual harassment. <laughs> I need that money. <laughs> But we've been together for a long time, and I don't know. I feel like he gets annoyed because I repeat stories all the time. But that's like, oh, because I have nothing more interesting to share with you. <laughs> so now these are the stories I share with him. This is one I told him the other day. It was called, What I'm Going to Do with Our Linen Closet. <laughs> and it was about how I was going to get several baskets because I want to separate our toiletries right now. It's bothering me, and so I might go to the container store to see if they have those baskets, but if they don't, then probably the dollar store. <laughs> That's something I thought he needed to hear out loud. Um, no plot point, no character development. <laughs> Just 10 minutes of a Dear Diary entry. Um, I'm working on another story right now. It's called I Was Gonna Get These Loafers, but decided not to. <laughs> um, that one's not done yet, but uh, I'll probably just drop that on him when he's busy or something. <laughs> I thought I wanted a baby, though, recently, but then I had to carry around an umbrella all day while it wasn't raining. <laughs> no way. That was so much responsibility. I left it everywhere. I ended up leaving it on the church steps. I was like, here, you take it. I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> it's so much work. I can't do it. But I do, I want a dog right now, except my husband, he doesn't want to have a dog. I wish there was a way to trick my husband into having a dog like you can with a baby. <laughs> it's so much easier, you know? Like, I can't just get my husband drunk and then wake up with a dog the next day. I'm like, oh my God, we have to keep it. <laughs> it's for religious reasons. <laughs> I love dogs, though. I like animals in general. I think they're great. Um, my favorite animal right now is the peacock. I like that one. You know what I love about it? It's got, like, these beautiful feathers up in front, and then when you go around the back, it's just a gaping asshole back there. <laughs> didn't bother doing anything to the back. You're like, oh, you didn't think people were going to go back behind there? Like, that's nothing. It's horrible. Doesn't that just sound like a saying that a southern mom would say? Like, just remember, behind every peacock's feather is a gaping asshole. <laughs> but no, I love animals, though. You know what I love about them is that they don't have any opinions. Isn't that great? Like, you're never going to see them on social media spewing shit that makes you upset. Like, wouldn't you be annoyed if you found out your dog was a flat earther? <laughs> Oh my God. And then you're like, I have to feed you. <laughs> oh, it's hard though. I, <laughs> that's how I rationalize eating meat. I just pretend whatever I'm eating has a dumb opinion. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, it's fine. This cow is in the Westboro Baptist Church. So <laughs> it's a piece of shit, but so yummy, so good. <laughs> no, but I did just get my cable and my IUD installed. Um, <laughs> It was a bundle package, so I know my cable company is doing amazing things right now, so I have like 100 channels and zero babies. Like, it's a pretty good deal. I did get an IUD for real, though, and I did no research getting it. Like, I just walked into Planned Parenthood, and I was like, what are all the girls getting? <laughs> 
I was like, that sounds great. Let's put that on my pussy for seven years. <laughs> I don't even know what it looks like. It could be a Lego piece in there for all I know. <laughs> Just like a little Lego man floating around. <laughs> That's like, no. <laughs> Everybody's happy. <laughs> I don't even know if that's the song. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day. Isn't it weird that we used to have milkmen? Have you ever thought about that? Like there was a time period where these guys would come to your house and deliver milk and then you would have sex with them. <laughs> so weird that we did that. <laughs> I guess they just died of venereal diseases. That's why we don't have them anymore. I was like, where's that movie? <laughs> The Milkman. I'd watch that. Don't you picture Kevin Costner in it? <laughs> He'd be so good in it. <laughs> Something you'd see on Netflix. I don't know. I was watching Netflix earlier. Do you guys ever just watch Netflix and you're like, do I like this or am I just poor? <laughs> you're like, what is this? <laughs> Some of that programming, they're like, this is a really great show to do your taxes to. That's how I picture they pitch, pitch that show. But I watched that show, Tidying Up. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, just a few. Marie Kondo, do you guys? Yeah. She's that uh, Japanese lady that goes to American households and then makes them throw away stuff they worked really hard for. <laughs> Not a great person. Um, she's the enemy. I wish they did that show in Japan, though, where it's just an American lady that goes to Japanese households. <laughs> and then makes them buy shit they don't need. <laughs> They're like, these are commemorative plates. Um, <laughs> they bring no joy. But, you know, fuck it, get it, who cares? <laughs> That's the name of the show. <laughs> it's just called Fuck It, Get It. I'd watch that one. It's great. Oh, but I love TV. I love Game of Thrones. That was my favorite show to watch. I just had everything that I liked in a show. Incest and then dragons. <sighs> when did those two come together? But they made it. And it was a perfect marriage. I always wanted to talk about that show with my husband, but he hates that kind of TV show. And so this is what I did when I wanted to talk about it. I would just pretend the characters are people that I work with. <laughs> No idea. I'd be like, oh my God, work was so weird today. Like, you know that girl Khaleesi I was telling you about? Well, she started hooking up with the guy, Jon Snow, down the hall. And, but then like Sam from HR says they're related. That, so crazy. They're like, I think she's his aunt or something. It's so weird at the office, but... I can't wait for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm impressed that you guys did come out. I think anything, coming out for anything. Like, I was really hoping that coronavirus would hesitate. Because I just want to be quarantined at all times. I don't want to leave. I, like, it's hard. Like, I have items on my to-do list that I haven't even completed from three years ago that I've decided to merge it with my bucket list. <laughs> I've always wanted to go skydiving and get my license renewed before I die. That's so much work. Yeah. Like, I started doing my taxes, and I feel like the hardest part about doing your taxes is getting everything together and then, like, organizing it so you can just put it in an envelope and mail it to your dad so he can do it for you. That's like, ugh, you know, here's a time for that. I think I might just go to H&R Block and then see if they'll mail it to my dad for me. <laughs> That's what you guys do here, right? Just mail shit to dads. It's difficult. I started a pile of clothes in my apartment to give to Goodwill, and it's been there for a year now <laughs> that I've started shopping through it. <laughs> it's great. It's like thrift store shopping, but free. <laughs> We're like, oh my God, how convenient. <laughs> they have all my sizes. That's <laughs> amazing. I don't know. I just can't, I don't have the energy to go to Goodwill and it's only like six blocks away and I'm like, ugh, that's so much work. 
Like, you guys get it. You've never missed a package from your postman before, and he's like, oh, you have to pick it up at the post office. And then you're just like, well, looks like I'm never going to get that package. <laughs> I'm just going to reorder that again and <laughs> just hope for the best. <laughs> it's so difficult. But I am going to therapy for it. Um, also for other stuff, too. Uh, <laughs> That'll be my next album. Uh, <laughs> no, but really, what I really need is more like a dominatrix instead of a therapist. Not to make me do sex stuff. Just, I just need a lady to step on my back and make me do my errands that I've been putting off. I just need a lady to be like, you need to donate those clothes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I used to not be able to afford therapy. Uh, I still can't. I just got a credit card and I move things around. Um, <laughs> it's called making it work. Um, but this is what I did when I couldn't afford therapy. You guys can do this. It's really easy. Uh, I would just tell my deepest, darkest secrets to do not reply emails. <laughs> yeah. It's a free service, guys. Yeah. <laughs> You should really be taking advantage of that. I'm sure someone at Amazon Shipping Center is like, oh my God, I think this lady needs help. <laughs> They're just like, oh no, she's fine. Just send her her knives. <laughs> and then Amazon's like, you might also like rope. <laughs> hilarious. I love it. <laughs> hmm. So good though. Somebody just told me that therapists have the highest suicide rate for profession. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> you have to feel a little weird when your therapist commits suicide, right? Where you're like, oh, <laughs> I feel like such a dick. <laughs> I've been just talking about myself this whole time. <laughs> I clearly needed my help, so... I don't even ask him questions about himself. I'm just like, tell him about my day. I'm like, this is great. I'll see you next week. <laughs> it's great though. But uh, I've been doing that bit a little while now and I always have somebody come to me after a show to tell me that actually it's veterinarians that have the su highest suicide rate. And then somebody else told me it's dentists. And then I had another lady tell me that actually it's toll booth operators. <laughs> So now I'm like, oh, I think no one wants to work. I think that's what's happening. And I get that feeling. I get that. I don't know if you guys can tell by my accent, but I am a white lady. It's so thick right now. I don't know. People hate us. I get it. <laughs> we hate ourselves, so if that makes you feel better. I'm trying not to be offensive, which is hard, because that's kind of our brand. Um, like over the holidays, I was at a bowling alley and there was this fat kid that lost his shoes. And the manager was like, do you know which kid it was? And I didn't want to say the fat one, right? Because it's just mean. So I was just like, oh, I think it was that voluptuous boy over there. <laughs> the one with the tits. Um, so I think I did it. it was so close. Um, <laughs> But I do love, I love saying that word narrative. I like throwing that into a conversation or gaslighting. Oh my God, ladies, how fun is it to use gaslighting? <laughs> I do it wherever. They're like, Sarah, you're late. I'm like, stop gaslighting me. <laughs> but I like narrative, like, it's an old word, but people use it a lot these days where they're like, that's not my narrative, that's your narrative, or that's a false narrative. Like, I was at Starbucks, and they were like, ma'am, your latte is 519. I was like, that's not my narrative. <laughs> I think that's your narrative. <laughs> I do like how when you go into a Starbucks, everybody's working on their dreams, but when you walk into a Dunkin' Donuts, no one's doing anything in there. <laughs> Have you seen anybody work on anything in a Dunkin' Donuts before? No. They're all sleeping. <laughs> Like, is this a heroin den? What is this? I was like, you guys should become a bus station. This is a shithole in here. So depressing. I saw a guy walk into a job interview with a Frappuccino once. I'm like, good luck, buddy. 
What a great way to tell your employer that you're responsible, like starting your day off with a milkshake. <laughs> like, okay. It had an extra drizzle on it. Just to like hit it home. I was like, that's not the appropriate beverage to bring into a job interview. I feel like you could do, you should come in with a mug with coffee in it. Like, what a great way to project that you work there already. <laughs> like, oh, did you guys call? Um, <laughs> A CEO on the mug. They're like, where do you see yourself in five years? You're like, it says it on the mug. You just have to project. But I, I am, I'm turning 42 soon. Um, I'm bummed about that. Uh, it's great. I'm glad you guys didn't clap. A lot of people do. It's weird. People sometimes clap when you tell them that you're in your 40s, like you've been serving your country. Um, they're like, okay, yeah, I'll take it. That sounds great. Um, but I've been trying to stay younger, so I've just been overdrafting my bank account a whole bunch. God, I feel like I'm in my 20s again, you know? It's so good. But now I'm at that age, though, where I have finally have accepted my body, and then my body's like, I think we're gonna go in another direction. I'm like, oh, can we talk about this? I only now just got used to the pooch. And it's like, yeah, but now we're gonna add hair to places, so. So I can't wait to get used to that. Um, I think if I just let myself go, I could just naturally turn into a man, which I'm fine with because I kind of need the money right now. I need cash. I need a raise. <laughs> no, but I do. I have hair on my chin. Um, I like it. <laughs> I feel like it makes me look wise when I play with it. I'm just like. Mm. Yes, yes, definitely. I would definitely Brexit. Mm. Mm. I don't even know what that means. I just say it to sound smart. Mm. I don't know. Do you guys Brexit? Oh, no. Oh, there it goes. Um, <laughs> we spill drinks. That's fine. No, don't worry. It's all right. We'll just dub this. Um, <laughs> I like it's a happy accident, right? Like Bob Ross. Wasn't he great? <laughs> I wish he was here right now. <laughs> it would be weird if he was, because he's dead. Um, but that would be a great ghost. Um, where was I? Oh, I was killing it. That's where I was. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was doing. Oh, I was trying to look good for you guys earlier. Like, I was trying to pluck one of my chin hairs out. <laughs> and I like how when I try to tweeze one of my chin hairs and it doesn't come out, and then I just end up curling it like a ribbon. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how pretty. <laughs> now I'm going to have to do the rest like this. Uh, not a look I was going for, but yeah, sure, I'll take a full bush on my chin. <laughs> Always wanted to match my crotch, so that's good. You know? I don't know. I do have a full bush. I like to disclose that um, to you guys. Um, don't worry, it's taped down. So I feel like you guys are looking at my crotch right now. Um, I don't know. Did you guys hear that it's making a comeback? Did you guys know that? Yeah, because I'm starting that rumor. Um, <laughs> Like, I do it wherever I can. Like, I'll just go to cocktail parties, and I'm like, oh my God, did you guys read that article about the full bush making a comeback? And then I'll just leave. <laughs> They're like, who was that lady? I'm like, why wasn't she wearing pants? That was so crazy. But I do think it's hard to be a lady, right, ladies? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure it's hard to be a guy. I don't know. It is hard? Yeah. It is. I don't know. I know for me, I'm always worried about getting murdered. Do you worry about that? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Guys, do you worry about get murdering people? Like, that's pretty hard, too. <laughs> that's so much work. I don't have the work ethic for a serial killer, so I'm very impressed. Because I think as we watch a lot of true crimes, that's why... That's one reason why I feel like we always worry about getting murdered, and also because you guys murder us. And... <laughs> Like, I remember in my 20s, 
I would be like, oh my God, I think that guy wants to fuck me. But now in my 40s, I'm like, oh my God, I think that guy wants to murder me. <laughs> doesn't that feel just as self-centered? <laughs> my friends are like, Sarah, he does not want to murder you. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm giving off that vibe. <laughs> I like how when you first date a guy, he's like, hey, text me when you get home so I know that you made it safely. Where I'm like, oh, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm in the trunk of a car. <laughs> mm, try to find me. <laughs> they never came looking for me, so that's how you know they're not the one. Uh, just a tip I'm trying to write into Cosmo with. <sighs> right now but yeah it is hard I don't know we're always dieting I think that sucks like I'm doing that keto diet right now do you guys know about that diet yeah it's like the new eating disorder <laughs> right it's where you don't eat any sugar or carbs you just eat meat and then drink heavy cream all the time so probably be dead in a few weeks um, but I'm gonna look so good <laughs> I just read somewhere, though, that one of the side effects from that diet is that it can make your vagina smell. I know. Can you smell it right now? Is it bad? I thought so. I thought I had a handle on it. <laughs> That's why every now and then I just eat a pizza just to keep it fresh down there. I'm like, oh, this is for my pussy, so... Doctor says I have to. It's really important. <laughs> I don't know. But I do, I, do, I do worry about my looks. I guess I'm vain. I got a haircut. I got bangs because I can't afford Botox. Um, <laughs> so I just look like a tired baby. Um, <laughs> I, I like getting my haircut. This is my favorite thing to do when I get a haircut. I try to find the nastiest photo I can find in porn and act completely oblivious that there's a horrible blowjob scene going on. And then I just take it to my hairdresser. <laughs> and I'm like, I really like your haircut in this. <laughs> Do you think you guys can make me look like her? <laughs> Mine is a dick in her mouth, but I like her hair. She looks great. Um, so fun. That's a good one. No, it's hard though. I, that one was dirty. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Sometimes God just speaks through me and he just gives me these jokes. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> this one's dirty. He helped with this one as well. He's going through a weird phase right now. It's crazy. Like, I have a friend that just told me he's trying to quit eating ass. <laughs> I know, isn't that, I'm like, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm like, but also at the same time, I'm like, is it really a problem? Like, is it tearing your family apart right now? <laughs> so just keep doing it. <laughs> Although I do feel like quitting eating ass has got to be one of the easiest habits to quit cold turkey. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you're presented with it at all times. <laughs> you're not like, oh no, I can't. <laughs> Oh no, another office birthday party. <laughs> You're like, oh wait, I'm all right. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Such a bad person. <laughs> oh, it's gross. Anybody eating ass in here? Oh, just one guy. <laughs> Good for you. No shame. Good for you. I feel like we're the only animals in the animal kingdom doing that right now. It's wild. I read this other article about these monkeys getting kicked out for 69ing all the time. I like that it said kicked out, where they're like, out. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That makes me laugh so hard, because it doesn't that just sound like a George Costanza plan to get out of the zoo. <laughs> It's like these monkeys were like, God, this sucks here. And then one monkey's like, I know what we can do. <laughs> Why don't we eat each other out in front of the kids? <laughs> 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 
they're so intelligent. That is so smart of them. I wouldn't have come up with that plan, but that's great. I'm so impressed. I had a friend that tell, told me that every time she goes to the zoo and she goes to the baboon exhibit, there's always one baboon that is constantly masturbating. I know, when she told me this, I was like, ugh, I get it, you're good looking. <laughs> you don't have to waste my time with the masturbating baboon story to let me know how hot you are. I never get a masturbating baboon when I go to that zoo. <laughs> I even put on my sexiest dress. I'm like, Mr. Monkey. Just leaning in, I'm like, come on, masturbate. <laughs> Mama needs this. <laughs> he just signs back, I have a headache. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's so, they're so smart. That's so impressive. So I was watching football recently when it was on and as a season, this, when I wrote the joke. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna even change it for another sport. <laughs> but I was watching a game with one of my friends and one of the players scored a touchdown and he thanked God afterwards. And my friend got so offended because he was like, you know, God has better things to do than help some guy score a touchdown right, right now. But then I thought about it, I was like, I don't know, maybe football is like God's social media. <laughs> like, I know when I have a lot of important shit that needs to get done, that is when I'm on Instagram and Twitter the most, just procrastinating. <laughs> maybe God's like, oh, I know there's so much stuff to take care of in China right now. I'm just gonna help this guy score a touchdown for five minutes. <laughs> Then eight hours later, he's like, shit. Oh my God, things got really out of hand. <laughs> There's a flu going on. <laughs> I thought it would go on its own, but I, uh, <laughs> he's like, all right, I'll just get to it Monday. <laughs> and then he's like, oh my God, Monday night football. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> No, but religion's weird. I always notice that, have you ever noticed that Jesus shows up in the saddest objects? <laughs> like in burnt toast <laughs> or like a sweat stain. <laughs> Never in like caviar or something or something fancy. It's just Jesus kind of trying to find a portal and he's, he can't because he's, he's kind of dumb maybe. <laughs> He's like, Ugh. and you're like, that's toast, Jesus. You're so close to the hole. Like, <laughs> you're, like you're, oh my God, you're so close. <laughs> He's like, how about now? <laughs> you're like, no, that's a sweat stain. <laughs> I love picturing Jesus as kind of dumb, but lovable. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. He's like the ultimate CEO son. <laughs> You're like, all right. <laughs> oh, but this has been really fun. I'm going to um, finish here. And this is my dismount. Are you guys ready? <laughs> I'm so excited. I was Q-tipping my ears the other night. And I was like, oh, my God, this feels so good. <laughs> like, have you ever... It feels so fucking good that for a brief moment I was like, I wish I could switch out my ear hole with my pussy hole. <laughs> like, I just feel like I could probably come a lot faster that way. Like, Have you ever Q-tip your ear? It feels like you have little clits in there. And I can get it like 100% of the time. We're like down here, I have to be in a mood. It's like a, it's like a stripped screw down there. Like, <laughs> I'm like, it's not working. Like, so I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna make so much money <laughs> on Instagram. And then I'm fine with taking my pussy hole and then moving it to where my ears are, <laughs> if that's the trade off. And I think that could help you guys out a lot more if we did that. That way you know if we're really into you <laughs> in the conversation, then our ears start just getting really wet. We're like, oh my God, go on about your day. <laughs> 
And then if we hate you, they just dry up. So. All right, guys, I did it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.